<laughs> and then <laughs> and then I was at Shmukon sharing a room with Paul and I was puking in the bathroom. I was thinking about that recently. Who was this? That was you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was this? You don't even remember. <laughs> It was you. Because uh, so, I was like, wait, I didn't share a room with you at DerbyCon. De- uh, <laughs> no, ShrewCon. I know. Shrew-con. Like I said, yeah. I didn't yeah. share a room with you at DerbyCon. Because <laughs> that was also me at DerbyCon. Oh, that's the, you a lot. You, the, the, you're the morning very of my talk. Pukey, you're a pukey kind of uh, person, dude. The, the morning of my talk. The morning the after episode like 100 or 150 oh, God, yes, in my in backyard. backyard. Yeah. Yeah. You're well, very yeah, pukey. At least it was in your backyard, though. That's good. You know. It was pretty easy cleanup. I just kind of hosed it yeah. off. Yeah, I hosed that off. I mean, no, it was raining out that day, so it was yeah, even wash away its own. I don't think I had to hose it down. Uh, man, the internet is slow. I can't get to the wiki. <laughs> Speaking of oh, hosing things man. down, well, you know, I heard that um, you know somebody uh, in the company broke the internet. So sorry about that. <laughs> Oops. Did you post a picture of your butt to break the internet, John? <laughs> <laughs> My God, no. It's got a champagne glass on it. <laughs> a martini glass. Uh, Adobe Flash is dead, but the name only. When is when is Flash gonna die? When can I have systems that don't need Flash? Uh it's it's the backward compatibility problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you're right, Joff. Right, because it's not Adobe that has this problem. It's the people who have implemented Adobe's technology and exactly. don't want to move off of it. I mean, UStream is a, a great example. Of how everyone watches this show. To this day, you have to change your user agent to an iPad, and then it'll give you HTML5. But it doesn't do that by default, which is... Eh. It's like the one last thing in our broadcast world that still relies on Flash. You can do everything. You can come to our website. You can get your smartphone, subscribe to our show, watch mm-hmm. all of our videos on your phone, on the web, and you don't need Flash, except when you do. For you, stream, and it, it's it's upsetting. Well, what, I mean, what's the alternative for something like that? Java, HTML5, Java, <laughs> could be Java. <laughs> it's more likely HTML5, uh, which we speculated several years ago would be problematic the flash with the, security. The flash but, killer. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's interesting. It doesn't rely on client technology other than your browser, browser. right? Which I. How do do you guys find, do you guys exploit a lot of browser based vulnerabilities? I, I, mean, I personally don't. No, uh, but I, but I was I was just going to go with the tangent that we don't talk about this much. But the the backward compatibility issue with software is, to a very large degree, responsible for a lot of the vulnerabilities that are out there. And it uh, is the panel and, company we use now requires Flash to log in. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, people cannot move quickly away. Once they've invested in a technology and then it pivots and changes on them, um, you know, it's, it's, I, that's a tough issue to solve. It, it requires a lot of work, right? If you have, if you're a corporation and a bunch of developers developed a Flash, uh, not a Flash, but a Java application, to use your example, Larry, mm-hmm. and now you want to say, well, we want to move forward. We don't want to support Java. We don't want to, support this old application you gotta you gotta rewrite it dude i mean and if yeah. you've been I, i've been a software developer um i've seen i've built applications i've supported a lot of applications it's not easy to write software mm-hmm. i mean it, when it comes right down to it right i mean that's really the crux of the issue right Jeff? when you talk about backwards compatibility the reason why we want to maintain backwards compatibility the obvious thing is it's a lot of freaking work to build a software application. That's and right. That's right. Not just build the application, but then support the application and implement it in a live environment is a lot of work. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And to redo that whole process can take a year or more, and everyone has to be trained. There's a lot of moving parts. And I think it's as that, I uh, – it's- it's from that uh, was it the the mythical man month uh, uh, book that, that you know that says uh, that a software developer can only actually produce ten quality lines of code uh, per day. That's not much. Wow. You know, and that's a for me. It's probably developer. like it's probably like one or maybe like is there such a thing as point five lines yeah, of code? Yeah. <laughs> in, in your case, Paul, yeah, I think we could uh, we could say point five. Yeah. 
per day? I don't know. Maybe every other day I produce a really good line of code. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Is that in the bathroom? I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't always. Do you have to I'm... cut a rope at a party? I don't know. I... <laughs> I don't know how secure it was, but I've written code that works real good. I don't know. <laughs> It works. Dude. Like, so you're. Just I was like, telling the just, guys, you're well, just like every other developer on the planet. Hey, I wrote code that works. We were sharing stories, though. I wrote some C plus plus code that we really needed, and I converted it to the new compiler, new operating system. It was a plugin for Lotus Notes. It was an extension to Lotus Notes, and I was taking C plus plus in school, and the code was C plus plus. But the code in school was C++ on Windows. The code at work was C++ on OS2 Warp, which really Oof. now... You see the gray in my beard? Oh, uh, That's there for a reason. It's because I'm old. I bet you had, <laughs> I bet you had stir copy routines. But you, but, you, but, you, but, you, but you know what? It's not growing down here, so you're... You, well, I you, shave it. Yeah, yeah I, you, you I don't I have the Unix neck beard. Yet. Yeah, I keep it neat. That's like the OS2 neck beard. It it's is. nice and neat. <laughs> it's nice and neat. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I don't know how secure it was, but it, it worked. I don't know what the point of my story was. Other there, than you know, the, the, other, I'll other tell you than what the point of your story Martinez. is, other than I've been the drinking. point of your story is people write code and they go, and then their very first thought is, does it work? Yes. yes. Check. Move Check. on. Move on. Because it was a critical path in the project, right? Like, in order for us to move as a company, so this was the point of my story. In order for us to move as a company from point A to point B and get from old software to new software, just one, just one of the moving parts was intern Paul, part-time employee writing code, who was still learning how to write code. Uh, I guess we're all still learning, but I was yeah. in college learning how to write code, had to port this module from like the old compiler and platform to the new compiler and platform, and that was a, a critical part. So t making it work was the most important thing. No one audited the code to see if it was secure, they were like, great, it works. So like everyone rejoiced when it worked and they're like, we can move forward with the upgrade. And it was happy times. And I, I think that's really telling of what goes on today, right? Um, even just converting code from old platform to new platform is laborious. Writing entirely new code in a mm -hmm. totally different mm -hmm. language, right? Like if you don't want to, if it's Java or Flash now, <clears> maybe <throat> now we'll write it in Python and go. put it in a Docker container, and we'll write it in Go and put it in a Docker container because yep, that's, that's the latest <coughs> greatest thing. Yep, that Go is like the new hotness for language. It is. Yeah, everyone's, doing, yeah. everyone's all about yeah. Go. Uh, it's a lot but, of work. It's a lot of work. Well, and, and you're, you're illustrating that the age-old problem that's existed for a long time, and then this massive. Uh, piles of code that exist as foundational portions of operating systems out there that are written in C uh, and written in C in the day when bounds checking was not even thought about, you know. Or, so, I mean, just written in PHP really in any point in time is <laughs> well, bad. This is, is bad. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, well, that, I don't know if you – the last time we did a show, I was talking about how I wrote a PHP application for work. And I had to accept input from the user. Oh, God. And I'm like, oh, shit. How do I do this? Yeah. And I, so I wrote more, it. More importantly, I know how to do this. Yeah. How do I do this right? Yeah. <laughs> it, that's exactly it, Larry. You hit the nail on the head, dude. I'm like, cool, it works. And then the hacker in me kicks in, and I'm like, I'm like, all right. I'm like, well, what happens if I do semicolon LS? Fuck. And I, I click go, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I work for, I'm a security guy working for a security company. And yeah, no one else is going to use this software but people that work for my company. But, but I can't, I can't definitely. like release it to the rest of the people who are security people right. who are going to have the same thought process that I had and put semicolon LS uh, and go, Paul, you are you preach this fucking security thing. And you don't fucking do you it. You don't they fucking do Paul, it. Paul, so, you're a douchebag. <laughs> but it took twice. I mean, it took twice. I mean, I, I, it was my first, like, one of my first PHP applications. I yeah. mean, it dabbled in, like, modifying PHP, but, like, if ba you... Baby's first PHP app. Yeah, it was, like, my <laughs> first... Like PHP app written completely from scratch, kind yep. of thing. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and I'm like, you know, uh, it took twice as long. It, and the the interesting thing was after the whole exercise, I was like, wow, well, I know why PHP is really fucking vulnerable now because. <laughs> 
to figure out how to do it securely was not just a one or two. Like, it wasn't just like a Google search and like, okay, here's how you accept this input that you're trying to accept securely. Like, I did the first Google search and I was like, okay, so they're telling me I got to do it this way. Like, yep. there's this function to, <coughs> I figured what the function is, but there's a function to check this, yep. to make, to strip out all the characters. And I'm like, okay. So I did that. And then I'm like, well, it's still vulnerable. I can still run LS. I mean, my command injection was limited to three characters, mm. but that was still a semicolon LS. And I'm like, that's still not good enough for me. I mean, so what's your conclusion is, is pretty much that the language in this case is... It's hard. Toy. PHP is hard to write no, secure. It's a toy. It took me like <laughs> almost three like steps, Joff, of going, okay, I've got what I think is a secure solution. And then like programmer me is like, okay, I implemented security and it still works. <laughs> yeah. And then security guy me is like, okay, well, how do I break it? And then I'm like shit, try harder, and then, you know, go through the whole iteration. Mm -hmm. And it almost took, like, three iterations, and now I've doubled my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm maybe like, if this was a maybe product... Maybe if, if this was a product we were selling, mm -hmm. and the time to create it was six months, I'm like, we'd be behind. Yeah, like, well, competition uh, would, do like, stomp on now, us, now because we'd said, take three times as long to create it than someone that, else. Now, that said, if that was a product that you were going to be selling for work, they wouldn't have put the guy that's his first real PHP application. This is it. true. You know, so. you're right. Like if they're hiring but programmers still. to develop software, they have experience <coughs> and their first time in, they're like, oh, I have to accept input. I know how to do it securely mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it differs the kind of input right. that you're uh, accepting as right. well. Right. Uh, and PHP has these uh, weird libraries for regular expressions. So Cause it's PHP. If you do that, plus you use the... Uh, Function, which I can't remember the name of, that strips out all of the weird characters from special the input, characters, yeah. special characters from the input, uh, except for a dash, because I needed a dash in this particular case. But all of their special characters strip it out. Uh, and I know what the format is. And then I know uh, how many characters, you know, like, I know the format, so I know how many characters should be preceded by this special character and whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like a three-step process to do. Once I know that, then I'm like, oh, when I need to accept input in the future, yeah, it might be a little easier. So the two or three times as long it took me is probably not as much for a regular program. But yeah. still, I firmly believe when I was doing research and Google searching for PHP, I'm like, this is bad. I'm like, this, <laughs> this is, is bad. A, this is a like, it shouldn't be this friggin' hard to accept input. And in PHP, it's super hard to accept input. Joff, I don't know if you've had that experience as well. But you know, the, the, the language is too, permi uh, too permissive in that respect, yeah. right? I mean, I agree. Uh, you, you, the, there, are be there are better languages that are much more restrictive on the way that you use you know, input functions, whether they be socket input, whether they be key keyboard input, or whatever. Um, and the other, the other comment I was going to make is. Uh, from the perspective of input validation, even if the language is good, personally, I've become a really big believer in uh, regular expression checking. I, I agree, Joff. Having experienced that myself, I'm like, wow. And, and yeah. regular expressions aren't, they're not meant for normal human beings, dude. No, and they're meant for weird people like they're, us. They're meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's weird, dude. I, it. You end up with a regular as, expression. As, as, it looks like one of my uh, children have just kind of like leaned on the keyboard, or if you have cats, like you do, Larry, mm -hmm. like and cats it, and children at the same time. Cats and children walk across the keyboard at the same time. Like that's your regular expression. That's regular. So, would you remember in the early days of C, or or even um, uh, let's have a '90s flashback here, uh, Perl. Um, it, both those languages had a, had a sort of point in time where uh, everybody was after code optimization and forgetting about readability. Yeah, I think of regular expressions in those terms. It's a write once language. It you, is. You, you write it down and you come back, you know, six months later and you look at it and go, "What the in the heck I was I doing?" Uh, I got to rewrite this thing. Forward slash question mark. I got to rewrite this. What is yeah. this forgetting? Oh. You know, and I, I've written. Um, it, it's God, bad. It, it, I've written. I've written Perl in my past. That's exactly the same way. I come back to it and go, I can't even read this. It's yeah, it, it's bad. It's, it, it's going to take me an hour to figure out what this does, or it's going to take me 10 minutes to rewrite the thing from scratch. Right. Yeah. That's it's it. a write once language. It's a write once language. Exactly. <laughs> Regular expressions, really, it's they're tricky. But they're very, very powerful. If you Extremely get them right. powerful if you get yeah if you get it right. So the good development. The good development practice to get into is write them, but document them with comments right above the damn regular expression. 
and with good so comments. You know, does. hey, documentation. We did a lot of reflecting this week here in Security Weekly Studios. I was telling the guys when I we were talking about going to school and learning programming, and how little I learned about programming. Yeah. In school versus, I was working part time for a software company running mm-hmm. software. Mm-hmm. And working closely with the developers who have been doing it five or ten years in a professional capacity and how much more I learned from them. Yep. And some of the things that they would instill on me is comments, Joff. And yep. I would write code and I would put comments in it and I would submit it to them, not my teacher. Mm-hmm. And a lot of teachers know, as we heard in previous interviews, which is if it compiles, you pass. Yes. It, they don't even really look at your code, and that's not every. Um, yeah. the most, you know, that's a generalization. Yep. There are a lot of great professors out there, and certainly I had some great ones too. But the people I worked with were way more critical. They would look at my comments and say, "That's not a good comment." And I'm like, "Well, why?" They're like, "It doesn't describe what you're doing. It's just a generic comment." Yeah, it's like, "Do this here." No, yeah. but why is it doing it this way? Who is it? Why doing and it? how? It, they were really good about that. Yeah. I always yeah. like when I'm reading code, I always like the comments that, that go something like this. Hey, this thing does something and I don't know what the fuck it does. But it so works. What is this? Yeah, but it works. I loved seeing comments like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that, the, the, you just like, got to resort to that. I got a lot of com- I have one comment in my recent software that I wrote that's like, this makes my brain hurt. And that's the whole comment. <laughs> I don't know how it works. <laughs> that, that's it like, works. I thought about it long and hard, and I wrote the code, that, and then I, was, I wrote the comment. I'm like, fuck it. It makes my brain hurt. I, I don't know what to tell I you can't even that. document this right now. Yeah. I don't even. And that, it's like uh, what the, one it's of the old things the that we uncommon. used to see about going to Google Code and searching all of Google Code for fuck. <laughs> 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 or even better, drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the alternative going to duck duck go and searching for the word drunk or fuck nice, <laughs> nice. yeah i, I want to uh, talk our, a little bit about real, real quick our, yeah, the ahead. one thing that i remember I story, the big big thing about uh, learning yeah. programming in college was um uh, you, yeah. it, and yeah. it sort of yeah. indicates yeah. back to me now that i had the right mindset to do this job and it wasn't yeah. that you know here no, go write here. some code oh. and uh yeah. the first day of one of our classes the instructor said all good programmers reuse code Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, through the semester, just, we did a did project A, project, and we did project B, and then we did project C, uh, and the final was a combination of project A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. And it was copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, change some variable names, integrate all three, and it took me about a half an hour to complete the final Ooh. in three hours uh, out of a three hour window. And I handed it to him, and he's like, the f- What? You hacked the class, <laughs> yeah. Essentially, it's like, yeah. how can I get around the system? Right. And he's like, you can't be done this fast. Yes, I am. I'm like, well, you can't even type that fast. I'm like, but you said I didn't have good. to type. I copied and pasted. It's yeah, way faster. copies and pasted. It's way, <laughs> face, way faster. <laughs> but you can't do that. He said. I said, I'll go back to my notes and tell you on the first day of class. You said all good programmers reuse code, and he's like, exactly, Shit. exactly. And you reused your own code, not yes, someone else's. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's not like you plagiarized. You told me to reuse code. What's the problem? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Even better, we make a I function out of it, and then you can reuse it over and over and over again. It was that Java, so I have was different still methods. Was I make functions in my Bash scripts. That's how function oriented I am. From Damn. dude, that's my- functioned up. <laughs> <laughs> You're all functioned up. <laughs> I I I took a, my first programming class when I was seven, and my son is now seven, and I really want to find a programming class for him. The, uh, but what's different because I'm old is that when I was seven, you yeah, had to basic. you had to know programming to use a computer. Yep. Right. Yep. Like that. Does uh does he do Minecraft at all? He does. He's getting really big into Minecraft. He I think he, Braden, my oldest son. Yeah. I think he's uh I think he's got my nerd gene. Yeah. Because he, he's starting to just figure out shit on his own. Yeah. Like. Uh, figure like out that. passwords on his own. Like he yeah. really pays attention to my passwords. Yeah, that's, that's and wants to hack them. That's, that's and, Karim. So, so we have these yeah, on the Roku. Like he's very curious and exploratory. Uh huh. And I gave him a new remote, and I'm like, oh, this remote for Roku has like a thing in it. I'm like, you can play video games. That's all I said to him. And then the other night, I walk in his room, and he's like playing Angry Birds on the Roku. I'm like. And like beating like multiple levels, and I'm like, dude, what, what did you, what did you do? He's like, 
Yeah, I just you know figured I it out. Day, I figured it out. I'm I like, figured you it out. Figured it out. He's like, yeah, I figured yeah. it out on my own. It's I was a, like, oh, it's so proud. Exactly. Like, so yes. Corinne is all yeah, about exactly. Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, no Starch has got a new book coming out. It's uh, mm -hmm. programming uh, in Minecraft with Python. Mm -hmm. And I've got it on pre-order. Nice. And I'm going to start getting Corinne into that. Um, nice. She does fantastic at Scratch. She understands all the logic about all that stuff. And freaking amazing. I, th I think and he's a very logic-oriented kid mm -hmm. like I was, right? Like... If I do like a, I was B telling the guys, we were talking about school and stuff. And I'm like, I sucked at math, but I, I did well with computers and programming because it's not so much about math as it is about logic, mm -hmm. and it, uh, it, it's two different mm -hmm. ways of thinking and thing. Like when they try and teach my son math in the new math, they try and make it about like math shit, and I try and make it about like logic shit, and then he's like, oh. I get it now. And yeah. we totally hack his homework. It's hilarious. Yep. So, yeah, Corinne's the same way. She, But she automatically gets the whole logic thing of what they're trying to get yeah, at. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's important. It's, it's amazing to see them develop. And, I wish and people that wrote code for embedded systems would <laughs> start when they're seven and <laughs> yeah, understand. Or start hiring seven and eight-year-olds. I don't know. Understand security better. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad software developers necessarily. No, but it, it's, it comes back to the same problems over and over again, I think. It does. So the couple stories that I had were... Uh, there was a group, I want to say it was out of the UK. I don't know if you saw the story, Larry. Somerset Recon? 900 devices. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I S saw that story, SEC too. SEC yeah. Consult. Um, I had a link to their actual website. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's... Um, I did some digging into this article. Um, it's number five, right? It's number five, but I... I I, I, I read you, it. You I did some more digging you into the. Po you posted it on Twitter. I didn't, thank you. I did post it on Twitter. Thank you. I posted the article to the company that actually did the research to Twitter. The one that I have in the show notes is to like the news article, but I uh, read the news article and then I read the person's research who uh, did the article. Yep. Essentially, they analyzed. I want to say it was three thousand different embedded. <laughs> um, Firmwares. Blog.sec-consult.com. Thank you. Um, in a, they're from 70 different manufacturers. What they found was amongst multiple firmwares, yep. they shared the same certificate for HTTPS verification and for SSH. <sighs> and oh, drew wow. lots of parallels and said, look, if you search the internet, uh, you can find this many devices, and they share the same SSH key, for example. And essentially what that boils down to, dude, is I found this in the firmware that we've analyzed, Nick and myself, for oh, the yeah. class we taught at Black Hat. Yeah. Uh, we analyzed firmware, and I'm like, dude, this firmware contain, and I show my students how to find it. I'm like, this firmware contains an SSL private key. Like, if it's in the firmware, it's in every device that uses this firmware. And... What they're showing is how widespread this problem is, <sighs> is that different manufacturers who probably share the same chipset will use the same firmware. And it's not even so much a firmware issue. It, they create the firmware based on a software development kit. Yep. And Broadcom, if you read the article that I posted on Twitter, mm -hmm. Broadcom produces an SDK which has like an example HTTPS uh, <laughs> certificate in it. <laughs> and everybody uses it. Everyone <laughs> uses the example yep. and develops firmware based on the Broadcom basically example mm -hmm. yep. and bakes that into all of the yep. firmware. Right. Therefore, the same private key is on okay, every single fucking firmware. We use a Broadcom chipset. uses a Broadcom so, chipset. So it, so it gets worse too because remember um, the uh, Project Sonar stuff with uh, HD Moore and... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Rapid Seven and, and and University of Michigan. He's he, you know still ZMAP scanning the internet and pulling down certificates, so you can actually get the database of them uh, <laughs> publicly of what's available with all those. Yep. Oh, here it is. So the certificate issued to which is pretty funny because they got the guy's name uh, to someone named Daniel uh, is used in a bunch of different Action Tech, Linksys. Dixil, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cross vendor, right? Not yeah, just, cross vendor. Found in the Broadcom same. SDK. Um, more than four hundred and eighty thousand devices on the web are using that single certificate. 
I bet there's more. I that bet goes from more. Broadcom to Texas Instruments uh, to Zixil. Zixil is another manufacturer of uh, embedded device chipsets and hardware. So, <laughs> else, yeah, and, and that re- that reminds <laughs> yeah. me. Of, yeah, the, and you'd, you'd be surprised how often that happens. Our, when I went to work at a healthcare organization many many years ago, mm-hmm. when we should keep to try secret back in the day. Um, yeah, the, and the, people can figure that out pretty easily. Yeah, exactly. Especially the, since we did the uh, Mike Michael Bazell interview. Yeah. Were you there for that one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah. Great oh interview. yeah, d- definitely. Um, but yeah, we think about um, when we got there. I'm like, what the hell IP address range is this? This is an RFC 1918 addressing internally. They're like, oh no, the guy that built the first TCP/IP network here, um, he got back from a class on how to do networking, and the example they used was the 159-139 class B network. So that's what he used, which is just a medical facility public- in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, so they took public ranges and just used them inside because that's what was in the example in the book that they used. It's bad. Ooh, like, wow, that could go way wrong. Yeah, but. The, when when I left there four years ago, they still had one fifty nine, one thirty nine addresses. Dude, and re re IP addressing is a major undertaking. Yep. Oh, and I, I've we've been at places oh, and, and, so and done shit. stuff that have used uh, one dot addresses, class A internally. Oh yeah, well there's a there's some common practices. Uh, yeah, and, um, and you know where one some... one dot is, right? Is that MIT, fucking China. Oh, is it China? <laughs> fucking China. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, China. But still to this day, um, uh, what's MIT wireless, four dot? I think Cisco MIT wireless four controllers dot. are a classic. They use one dot one dot one dot one for yep. the portal. Yeah, and, and it's nobody changes it. Nobody changes it. Yeah, China. How do you tell? How do you tell you've just got APT'd? Well, it looks like all of our internal traffic because it's coming from all, the one dot bit. All of your captive portal traffic on your wireless network is coming from China. Oh no! Uh, no, seriously, <laughs> seriously, it's a huge. It's it's a problem. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, Paul, there was a bunch of embedded stuff this week. I had one that I didn't put in. Um, for. Oh, there was. Uh, I want to make sure we talk about Barbie. Yeah, I've got two stories on Barbie, and you've got. I one, saw that. So. You know, I added that story, and then I looked at your stories and saw that you had added it. And yeah. I know that's in your uh, skill set yeah. much more than mine. So, and we talked about the hack, the Barbie, yeah. on a previous show yeah. several months ago, but before it had come out, and people were speculating. And now someone's done a teardown. Yep. And oh, uh, so. and uh, Matt Jakubowski, Jaku, yeah, um, actually reported some findings to them um, from stuff he was able to recover from the device. And you know what they said? Meh. You can get that from the interface. Like you can go in and clicky clicky on your iPad and get that same stuff. He's like, but I shouldn't be able to steal someone's and be able to get that stuff. Yeah. And so the Barbie connects to the internet, though. It does. And it talks, yes. right? That was the concern. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, so if you if you start looking at my wi- my Amazon wish list right now, you got Barbies in your Amazon Bar- wish list, dude. I'm really Barbies. Can, I'm really kind I have of girls, but that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm gonna. Just... And then uh, uh, at Hackfest uh, for Sands, uh, mm-hmm. Tim Medine did uh, a presentation on the Genesis My Friend Kayla doll. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a doll that connects via Bluetooth to your iPad mm-hmm. and interacts with your iPad and goes out to the internet and um, you can ask it questions and ask it and it goes out to Wikipedia and gets definitions of words and will refuse to say some words and he's got all of that stuff so that he can modify he's got prox- proxies to be able to change what comes back from Wikipedia and so you can make it say dirty things oh you can make it say dirty things even worse. The first time that it gets turned on before you pair it, and even sometimes after it's already paired. So they, the, they've been doing this thing at Sands one of the nights that they've had an IoT hacking night. Mm-hmm. And they just bought a bunch of random crap that yep. connects to the internet and put it in front of the classroom and say, go. Here's firmware images, here's stuff, hack it. Um, the first time they did that, they had Kayla there. And I just happened to turn on my Bluetooth, and sure enough, there's a listing called My Friend Kayla. And I connect to it, no pin required, no authentication, and it was a Bluetooth audio device. Oh. oh. Rick Astley managed to show up coming out of Kayla, just bloop. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. So, of course, they ended up going in the, at Sands, Sands Vegas. They went and put Kayla in the middle of the hallway. 
mm -hmm. and Tim was just sitting out in the hallway in like the chairs and stuff and was connected to it Bluetooth with a uh, Exorcist soundboard mm -hmm. and just this doll in the middle of the hallway and people would be walking up to it and like, what the hell? And they'd make it scream <laughs> as they're walking by. <laughs> <laughs> and they left it in the hallway and just randomly through the day they'd just make it scream and stuff. And it would compare to it and, basically. And someone stole it. <laughs> That's oh, oh. <laughs> so he had to buy another one. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yep, but yeah, if, uh, yeah. The 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 Tim's talk at Hackfest was awesome. So, does he have a new domain and Twitter handle like my Kayla is a slut or something? Wow, you're gonna register that? Aren't no, you? I'm not. I'm not. I've got it. I'm in a twelve step program. <laughs> 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 I'm a 12 step program for buying domains. Yeah. <laughs> now, me and Larry have a common weakness with that. Fuck, fuck I bought Larry's truck, Larry's other truck, and Larry's other other truck. I mean, sh <laughs> jerks. Don't do this to me. You're, you're enablers. Oh, uh, don't, oh don't did you see Sammy Camcar's Max? Oh, my God, yes. Oh, what do you think of that? It's. Uh, you can't like swipe a card, though, can you? No, you can't swipe a card. It's a. I didn't look at you, it. So uh, it's in depth. Effectively, you're taking the mag stripe, and the mag stripe is just a bunch of ones Numbers. and zeros. Numbers. Yeah, ones and zeros. Yeah. And you're taking that, and you're doing the magnetic induction to read the ones and zeros, and then you're putting those in a chip that is essentially taking a coil and then just creating electromagnetic pulses. Just like so you your don't card have to would swipe when you it. swipe it. No, it, it effectively is just a device. You lay there and it does the pulses just like you're swiping. Interesting. Kinda, it's kind of like a replay attack. It's, a, it's exactly a replay attack, but it can be modified because on the card indicates whether or not it is a chip and pin card or it is strictly mag stripe. Mm -hmm. So if you capture someone's mag stripe, car, mag stripe that says, hey, I'm chip and pin and the chip needs to be present, then you're screwed. But now it can't you can't emulate the chip. Right, it cannot emulate the chip. It's just the mag stripe. But mm -hmm. you can modify the mag stripe data to, to say, say I don't need a chip. I don't have a chip. Uh, Help me out anyway. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I, I'll work because the authentication is done at the the uh, the negotiation for whether a chip is required is done at the card. It not essentially at the renders reader. chip and pin. Chip and pin useless. Well, do you need a pin number? No. Because nope. chip and pin is chip and pin. Without it, it's just signature based. Or I see. not. Not. It's so the, he demonstrates it by going up to like one of the parking meters that takes a credit card and you yep. put it in, you boom, boom, those, and, and off the, you go. The local hospital here. Yep. Named and after the state. Yes. <laughs> it and, has and, those. And off you go, right? I mean you don't have to put in a pin. It's actually kind of convenient. Yeah. Because who the fuck Carries change on them nowadays, exactly. right? But you don't have to put in a pin, right? You swipe your card. Swipe your card. You done. say yes, and you're done. Exactly. I capture your card. I modify the bits to say no chip is required. Mm -hmm. So defeating the whole chip and pin methodology. And it says, hey, I'm a mag stripe card, and I'm a mag stripe card only. Replay? Oh, sure. No problem. And you can hold Sammy's device up to that system yeah. that's expecting you to put a magnetic stripe in there. Yep. And it's effectively mm -hmm. emulating the magnetic stripe. Without having to slide, because even when I slide mm -hmm. my card, I mean, you know, we've mm -hmm. all been to hotels. When you slide your card here for the donkey show? Yeah. When you slide your card <laughs> for the donkey show, the magnetic stripe never works, right? Because it's been demagnetized somehow. Mm -hmm. But this device that Sammy created emulates the magnetic right. so without the having to swipe it. Yep. And it, effectively, the, the mag stripe on the card is so low energy that you actually have to put it in and put it right near the reader. His, with the coil and uh, with, with the amplification, yeah. you can put it a little bit further away, and it sends the same pulses just like the card was being scanned back and forth. That's really cool. Yep. It's it's awesome. I You know, I am so disappointed that I wasn't on the episode when Sammy was here by himself and not part of the panel. Sammy and, is my hero. Uh, I, he is. <laughs> and you know what? I would... I it, love Sammy. It, it, Dude, uh, he is of, like the nicest guy in the of, world, of by one, the way. He's been on the show twice. And he's just, he's yeah, so awesome. And it, yeah. it's one of those, you said like the top five people you'd love to sit down and have dinner with. Would be oh, yeah. Cotton. Sammy would be one. Sam, Sammy's I've in been, my top I've five. I've been in... We weren't at the same table, but at BrewCon, they took all the speakers out for yeah. dinner. The Sammy Duval. was the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Duval. That was the night after Duval. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I'd I'd love to sit down with Sammy and just 
even a freaking under NDA and talk about the, some of the stuff he's working on. Just we c- that could be arranged. Yeah. We should bring him back on the show to talk about about this too. Yes, and any of the other stuff he's got going on. I mean, I love I love Sammy. I love Sammy. He's my hero. He said it. Uh, well, you were here on the 10 year anniversary yeah. when he was on. Yeah. He was on the panel, so it's yeah. kind of different it because different. there's other yeah, people, yeah. and we're locked into a specific topic. But yep. yeah. Um, what else do I want to talk about? We talked about Barbie. We talked about embedded devices. Um, VTech. Where do you want to talk? Talk about VTech. VTech. Please. You heard uh, so VTech toy manufacturer. Um, VTech makes. They used to make. Uh, Curtis phones. Do they still make Curtis? Yeah, they still do. Phones, they yeah. still do. Yep. They also make a bunch of kids' toys, and they also have an Android tablet. Uh, Android Baby monitor. Do they make? Ba- <coughs> yeah, they do. They do. Um, they also. They so the big one is that for this they have a Android drive tablet that has uh, a camera and chat capabilities through mm-hmm. uh, app they developed, um, and it talks back to centralized VTEC servers and and all this type of stuff. Um, they got hacked, and somewhere along the lines of 7 million um, sets of information for VTech users, including pictures of kids, their parents, and contact information, got compromised. Like, hmm. yeah. <clears throat> like, the company that you have bought their device and are expecting to have some security about your children, and sure enough, Millions and millions of pictures of kids taken with the camera, sent over their chat and contact, all that fun stuff app, you know, gets released. Um, what? It's hugely disappointing. While we're on the subject of um, hardware hacking. Yeah. It's like the hardware hacking. It, 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 there's a lot of hardware ha- So uh, I, I, I think we interviewed him. Who's this? The Steve Pizer. Lord. Steve Ward? Steve Lord. Steve Lord. It sounds familiar. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? I want to say we interviewed him on the show. But I don't know. But he's, I didn't look it but up. But he's from KiwiCon, so he's in, in Austra- uh, Australia. So this is the... Uh, basically, he configured a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it, even better, he configured a Raspberry Pi Zero. To uh, intercept DNS queries for popular social networks so that people couldn't selfie themselves if they're using open Wi-Fi. Now, I think his project is cool. It's like a fun little project? Yeah, I think it's a fun little project. However, I think that there's always going to be a social network that you didn't account for. I I think more importantly, there is uh, 3G, 4G Mm -hmm. that you're not going to be able to intercept. So if you're intercepting my Wi-Fi, I'm going to... In fact, when I'm in public places, I tend to turn off my Wi-Fi and use 4G. That's us. That's That's us. us Because we have some relatively well-paying jobs, but you think about some of the... You think about the... We're nerds, right? Like, I monitor my data plan. I know how much my... I have a a Wi-Fi device, actually, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that... um, is a hotspot, mm-hmm. and when you turn it on, it tells you how much data you yeah. have. And it's yeah. small because I'm a freaking nerd. I take that device with me on the weekends, and I wear my tactical pants. Mm-hmm. And in my tactical pants, there's a pocket where it, it fits, fits perfect. perfectly. Yep. So I'm like a walking hotspot. So if the kids are being bad or they're bored or they're in the car and they want to use the Internet, okay. yep. I have authorize the internet. them to use the, the Internet in my pocket. But it yep. tells me how much I'm using so I don't go over my data usage. Exactly. And you think about this, that you think about the, 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 the quote, hipster generation, the, the younger folks that don't have the, the luxury of the jobs that we have, that have a data plan that is restricted to one gig a month. So and, when they're and in they're, a public place, they're, when they're at a, a amusement yeah, park or when they're, they're at a coffee shop, they're using the open they're Wi-Fi. They're going to want to use the open Wi-Fi to reserve their data plan. You know, you don't ha- I, how many times do you see stuff about, you know, folks – you know, saying, "Oh, my my data usage is up, and I I've got to, I can't do data on my phone, and right. I can't get text. I turned off data on my phone. I'm only using Wi-Fi. Exactly. So they're they're using the open Wi-Fi networks, and I think this is this is huge. Because I, I think that's yeah. Because I love taking selfies of myself. So I do too. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Do you have a selfie stick? I looked at them. I haven't bought one yet. Oh. I, I bought a, a new selfie cam- stick. I, I bought a new camera. So, well, part of the reason why 
I'm not big on the selfie stick. It's because well, selfies are it's, selfies, but it's whatever. Weird. Yeah, but it's weird. I bought a new camera, and I'm I'm realizing that uh, I bought a mirrorless camera actually, nice. uh, an A6000 from Sony. Nice. And I'm realizing how much better pictures I can take with that camera, and still have it be small. How much better that is in my cell phone, and how close I can get to quality from uh, my uh, DSLR. Uh, I have yep. a, like a Nikon D60 or something. Yeah, yeah. one of the. Did, like, did you did you upgrade the yours? I haven't upgraded my deal, so I bought a mirrorless yep. uh, because it's small, and I'm looking for the right like uh, belt pack. Yep. So when I go to the amusement park or anywhere with my kids, like, yeah, it's there. We went to a. It's like uh, taking out your phone. Down the street from our house is like a dog walking trail, and we walk in the woods and yeah. take a bunch of pictures. And I wanted my, I wanted a real camera, dude. Like I was tired of the. The phone, and I'm tired of taking selfies, and I don't care that when I take it with the camera, I can't immediately upload it to social media. I mean, the camera has Wi-Fi on it. I can get the pictures on my phone, and there's an extra step involved, but I like the quality of and being able to swap out lenses. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, dude, mm-hmm. it's just, I mean, you know, like, there's there's a lot more you can do with it, so... Yep. Yep. That's why I haven't bought a selfie stick because I bought Get a, off my lawn. I bought a real camera. <laughs> uh, real you know, camera. Uh, you too. know what? I was at Amazon and there was like one of those add-on type of things for a selfie stick and it was cheap. And I, I looked one. at the lighting deals on them and what my sister told me, my sister's uh, three years younger than me. Yep. So I asked her about the selfie stick. <laughs> <laughs> so And she's like, you know, she's like, my friends have bought selfie sticks. She's like, don't buy a cheap one. She's like, we've bought the cheap ones. She's like, they suck. She's like, if you're going to buy a selfie stick, be all in mm-hmm. and spend the money on a nice selfie See, stick, and I just can't justify. I've, I've bought, I've bought one. I think I paid six dollars for it, and it's because it was like an add-on, yeah. so it was extra discounted. Amazon. And it sucks, right? No, it was. It's actually fine. Does and, it use Bluetooth but, or whatever? No, but it's well, got how do you a, take the picture? It's got a button on the handle, yeah, and the button connects to a wire that you plug into your phone in the headphone jack. Okay, that triggers okay. it. Okay, um, and it was cheap. That was the big thing. Um, and it said it'll be fun, you know, being, you know, we have kids and stuff. It's fun. It can be fun with kids. I do. I, I, I but, shopped uh, around. I didn't pull the trigger on them. But, but so you, Amazon but, has these lightning deals, dude. Yeah. I, dude, I got some awesome deals on the lightning deals. Awesome. I mean, you have to, it, you have to stay up late or wake up early. Like you got to be yeah, in the yeah. window because there's only so many they give in the deal. Yep. And I looked at two selfie sticks and I, I didn't pull the trigger. That's fine. That's fine. It's probably a smart thing. But. I didn't you miss know, out. Was what I do. Saying. I you know you didn't miss out, but I do love Alec, Alex Hammerstone's approach to the selfie stick. What's that? So Alex Hammerstone takes a lot of selfies, mm-hmm. and he has a selfie stick. Mm-hmm. So what does he do? He takes pictures with the selfie stick, with the selfie stick. He takes a picture and he holds a selfie stick and he <laughs> takes a picture of himself with the selfie stick. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Love you, Alex. Do you have a selfie stick, Joff? I do not have a selfie stick, although. My wife and I have been doing selfies since about 1994, so I think we invented it, actually. Wow. Probably pretty should have good. written a patent on that or something, yeah. It's pretty good. Anyway, no, I don't you, have one. Did you so. have a camera phone in 1994, Joff? No, but did you could still your, hold out a camera in front of you and turn it around and take a picture. Yeah, but you couldn't so. see what you're... Yeah. In 1994, I mean... You were still using Digi- film, weren't you? Film. I was going to say digital photography in 1994. Oh my god, I'm dating myself. I was film. Ugh, yeah. I had a Sony. Ca- I had a Sony camera that took floppy disks. You could oh, put the yes. floppy disk right in the camera, yes. dude. It was like I cutting had, edge technology. 1990. That is cutting edge. 1997, 98. I had a Kodak camera. Yes. That you could use a compact flash. flash card. I bought one of those first ones too. Oh, from and you turn it on, and it's like a thirty-second startup time. Yes. The lens. Brr, 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 and it's got this little teeny screen on it. Yes. I still have it. It was thirty seconds between photos yeah. too. Photos yeah. Too. I, <laughs> I, I, I still have it. And you know what? It's amazing technology. It's, it still works. It still works. I still have it. It still. That's works. pretty funny. I don't know what happened to mine. I had I one know, of those. Right, I, it's right in right in the basement in the. Box digital full of cameras. Digital were, cameras. Yeah. It's in the box full of digital cameras, which is sad. Yes, <laughs> yes. I do like my A6000. That's like the. It's not the latest. It's about a year old yep. technology, which seems really old for nowadays. Um, but it's uh, it's it's really you can get all kinds of lenses for it. Mm-hmm. It has Wi-Fi in it. A Wi-Fi in an NFC. If you have an Android device with NFC, or you can hold the camera. Your iPhone has NFC now. Does it? The yeah. Yeah. The six plus, yeah. which one? Six. The six? Yeah. Really? Six. No, it's the latest, latest. I don't six have, S. Six S. 
I don't have this, the S. I had the 6 Plus. <laughs> I'm, I'm behind one rev on the iPhone. I know. But my Android devices had NFC like 10 years ago, so right, I'm right. good. <laughs> right. That's why I buy Android tablets so I can stay up on the technology that's like 10 years ahead of the iPhones. Speaking of being 10 years ahead. Anyway, what did we even uh, we, did we even Medusa. talk about security in the past 20 minutes? Medusa. Medusa came out with bug fixes uh, and uh, some performance enhancements. Which is no new features, but fine. as most of us know, when we use Medusa, uh, which is a, a kind of an offshoot from THC Hydra, mm -hmm. Medusa has been a little buggy. And they haven't had a new release in three years, but this latest release fixes some performance and bug uh, issues. So uh, I was happy to see that because I it, it did support Medusa does support some other things that Hydra didn't. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it was for pen testers out there. Definitely, if you're like, oh Medusa, I haven't used that in a couple like, of years. For, I haven't used that ever yeah, forever because it because it, it, it sucks. It crashes or there's issues with it. Right, check it oh, out. I now. haven't either. I was always a Hydra fan because yeah, yep. I I was too. I dabbled with Medusa, but. I think it's time to go back and test it out because uh, there's been a lot of bug, bug fixes in the latest uh, release, which is three years since mm -hmm. Medusa has had a, a release. Yep. So hey, if we've got a little bit of time, I we think do. Uh, it makes sense, given that it's episode 443, that we talk about some certificate stuff. In th in three minutes, let's talk about some. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to talk about it. Dell's we version of Super uh, Superfish. Ah. Yep. Nothing like creating your own CA. A. Including that all, and your, yeah, your if CAA. you're in Canada, it's a CAA, and including that, <laughs> all sorts of fucking disaster with that. I mean, didn't they learn from IBM Superfish example? And uh, turns out they just discovered in the last two days or so another certificate. So it's not one; it's two. <sighs> dude, I, I don't want to buy a Dell, dude. I don't. <laughs> you, yes, you do. You but you want to format it and reinstall it from scratch. Yeah, but d and put right. Linux on it. And put Linux. <laughs> if Linux did, would do everything that we needed mm -hmm. to run the show, Nick and I were talking about that. I would totally run Linux for everything, dude. Yep. Um, unfortunately, it does not. It does not. And then nope. we get talking about Richard Stallman and how he's right, and then we're like, even if he's right, it's still not reality, and we still yep. have to run Windows. What I've been doing recently, in one of my stories was uh, with Windows Ten. I've been just upgrading everything to Windows 10. Oof. I mean, as painful as that sounds, uh, if you have Windows 8.1 like I do, and you want to go from Windows 8.1 Home to Windows 8.1 Pro, you can't do that anymore. You have to go to Windows 10 Home and oh, do God. the upgrade, which is free, though. Okay. Which is sure. fine. And then go from Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Pro. So I've been slowly converting everything to Windows 10 uh, Pro. If they yeah, want to give it, me a free upgrade to Windows 10, whatever, and then sounds then I'm on the latest version of the OS, and then if I want to put a new hard drive in it, I have to call them and re-register it, but I don't have to pay for a new... We're kind of at that cusp, and you know this, Larry, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we have so many Windows licenses. We could almost do Windows Small Business, but not. Like, yep. we're at the cusp, right? Like We have yep. just enough Windows... Uh, yep. There's enough Mac and Linux that supplements it that we don't really need to go there, but. Mm -hmm. um, and and real quick, I do want to jump back to the search thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Let's Encrypt. Have you heard of it? No. It's uh, a, yes. a joint venture. I think it's between the EFF and the state of California um, that they've yeah. essentially created their own certificate authority that will grant certificates for free. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, I love that the EFS has done that. It's it's awesome. Uh, what's the browser uh, vendor acceptance though, uh, Larry? What's, um, I get, don't get I traction? don't know yet, um, but I, my understanding is that it's uh, going to be pretty interesting, especially I especially because I, especially because I know that there's a bunch of folks that have already got certs for domains that are really shady. Our our new executive producer Keith uh, gave us a gift. Oh. Sam Adams Utopius. Which is a very high alcohol yes, content beer. Fantastic, a lot of flavor going on in it. Oh. I've had a, a previous. The, yeah, not we, the we've had we've had we've had it before. It was a copper bottle yep. the year that we had it. Yep. Um, just yeah, a whole was, lot of flavor going on. Uh, a lot of caramel. Right there, that was my reason to be in studio. Yep, was it I, was. Have you ever had Utopias, Joff? I haven't. If you I like beer, it's it's like you it's put a it on your list. It's a dude. barley. It's a yeah. barley wine. 
If you yeah, I'm, I'm agree, less Larry. Of it's a boiling one these days than I used to be. I'm, I I like some good scotch to be honest. So. Mm -hmm. No, I was telling. A tell lot of caramel and a lot of cinnamon, mm -hmm. like really like flavors off the yep. charts. A little citrus on the after. Yeah, uh, like there's all kinds of stuff going yep. on in this. Yeah, we uh, Jeff, I was telling, I was telling Keith that that uh, I think over the last six weeks to a couple months, the only thing I've had is brown liquors, pretty much, and it's been uh, bourbon, whiskey, and rye over the last two months, and that's pretty have much all I've been drinking. Have you tried um, nice. Nice. Glenn Farkless? No. Glenn Farkless, 12 or 17 year. Was it 12 years, like 40, 50 bucks, 17 years, about 100 bucks uh, for a bottle? Yep. They go up from there. Yep. When you start making the jump from 17, it goes to like 20, 30, 40, and then it increases in price from like 200 Four hundred. Yeah, if you get beyond the twenty, yeah, mm -hmm. like Glen Forkless, yeah. you can really get up there. But the twelve and the seventeen year are like uh, uh, attainable for if you want to buy a nice bottle of yeah. scotch. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a hundred bucks isn't horrible no. for a bottle of, no. of scotch. I think especially I paid, for a seventeen year. I, yeah, I think I paid for a seventeen or eighteen year. Hundred bucks is yep. is 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 not horrible. Um, it's so good, dude. It's so, it's one of the scotches that I bought, and I haven't been really into. I've been more into yeah. bourbon, which is a lot more affordable. Yep. Uh, really into bourbon lately. Uh, actually, really into martini. We drink a lot of martinis tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, a so, lot more sorry, affordable I when you drink martinis. <laughs> but uh, no. the Glen Forkless would be my recommendation for the holidays. Interesting. Now, now one of Paul I talk of. Now, I, I did have one story I wanted to yeah. mention. Don't mind, uh, Paul, and and Go ahead. it is. It is a bit of an axe grind, but I want to put it out there without getting too political. You know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> Encryption. <laughs> Encryption, yeah. Spelled I want correctly. To talk about, <laughs> I, I want to boy, talk about encryption. <laughs> um, there's been a tendency of the media of late to um, uh, put encryption as, as kind of the enemy uh, in this, this whole discussion about uh, terrorism. And mm -hmm. the thing that... Um, that is being forgotten is that uh, the math is pure a eh? and strong encryption is absolutely required and a must for you know honest <laughs> yeah. something's Sorry. going on bless you honest, sneezing straightforward commercial transactions strong encryption is very much a requirement and so there's a story i put in there that that uh that talked about uh, that talks a little bit about um that issue and how the uh encryption Technology itself is very agnostic and uh, is absolutely required as everyday part of our lives, and it is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have that balanced point of view, and that's all I'm going to say. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. Nice hat. And that uh, nice hat for me? Yeah. Thank you. It's a beautiful hat. It's my Christmas hat. It's got, well, it's my holiday hat. It's got Christmas Because it incorporates both Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Yeah, because it has. Because well, uh, you could give it. Thanksgiving turkey or goose. Yeah. It could be a goose. Yeah, there's a turkey on it, Christmas trees, and all kinds of Christmas. Yeah, and it's PC, too, because you said holiday hat. You didn't say uh, Christmas hat. Well, I said I, I holiday hat because it incorporates Thanksgiving and Christmas. I was not because say it doesn't include, like, Kwanzaa and Festivus for the rest of us. It doesn't. So. It does not. I'm a huge oh, proponent. You can say Merry Christmas. It's fine. This goes back to our conversation uh, during yeah, break yeah. about yeah. the whole whatever. Yeah, we have to drink out of red cups next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh thank you for the compliments i do get a lot of compliments on the hat uh i was trying to be festive <laughs> they're compliments oh uh, the, well <laughs> comments i should say comments well, yes comments the comments. whole purpose is to spark comments and debate conversation about, anyway i thought it was to cover your head the purpose well that probably because i'm i'm kind of really i shaved my head and then my beard is really long so i look like the the guy in iron man <laughs> who's the guy that runs the court you know who I'm, you're laughing because yes. you know who i'm talking yes. about right like i'm like i can't be as dramatic as the guy in iron man and then i shave my head and i grew my beard long and i'm like shit i look like the fucking guy yeah, from iron, iron man. man oh come on now you've got to give us now you've put that out there you've got to give us a quick preview Paul. i do all right here we go here it goes there, we go. there it is yeah. look at that mm, uh, it's not that bad yeah, it's kind of iron man i mean when i first shaved my head it was really iron manish but yeah Anyway, Joff, thank you very much. Larry, Yay. thank you very much as always. Uh, no, we you. missed John Strand. John Strand said he was going to be here, and he, yep. he no showed us. And, and you know who and I re I'm really going to miss? Probably Jack. Won't see him. Yeah, Father Christmas apparently I will miss, not be joining us. I know I miss Jack. Um, 
I, I do uh, take sanction that he is in his uh, winter home yes. in Georgia enjoying the warm weather. So yes. he deserves that. Yeah, good well, him. thanks, everyone, for watching. And that concludes this edition of Security Weekly. Larry, take us out. Over and out. <laughs>
if you created the Saga Sugar. If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodell from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most Hi, Will. Hey, guys. How you doing? Ah, uh, excellent. How about you? All right. You have all the Skype information, everything you need? I was just looking for that. It's in that email you sent, right? It's in the email. It's also in the show notes now. Oh, okay. Yep. We should have those both those contacts in the system, but you never know. So you want me to get them both on right now? No, we get one at a time. So this segment's sure. going to be Clint, and then the next segment, yeah, um, if we're close to getting Paul on. Okay, I'll go check with Paul. He, he, yeah, he, a, he does remember we have a show, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, we ran a little over on security. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All, right. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Paul says about three minutes. Okay. So yeah, you could get Clint on whenever yeah. you want. Yeah, if you want to chat with him for a second. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Clint. Uh, good evening. 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 Get my video turned on here. Hey, Clint. It's Coop. How's it going? Going good. You guys hear me all right? Good levels and everything? Yeah, everything looks good. All right. So Clint, I'm actually smoking uh, one of my favorite I agree. cigars. I, I agree Which would be? The 262 Revere Lonsdale. Right. 
Ah, oh, very nice. That that is. Uh, I had a couple of these left, and they they are spooky. fantastic. Yeah, that's a that was a good smoke. Really. Oh God, this is going to be interesting. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a hike. The three of us only have to go right down the street. Uh, and that, I, I, I tell you what, I, I had to go a block away before, and I got lost. I took the, I took a layer. Yeah. Hey, I tripped over the rock. Instead of taking a right on the black rock, I went down. I went down the fucking hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I ripped. Took three months. I was limping for two weeks. Blood. Yeah. Oh, so oh, my weapon. Oh well. Oh, well, she's seen worse. Ciao. Hi, Nick. Bye. Thanks for tonight. I can't hear Thank yeah. you. Cool, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe a little less music than <laughs> How's everything going? Oh, uh, going good. Great, great. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey, Nick, you got my email on the on the uh, on the banner, um, right? The banner. Um, you sort of, yeah. We need to swap a graphic out. Okay. Okay. It's the M Bombay one. I was like, Rain Man. Hey, yo, where's Paul? Yeah, that's uh, a good question. I don't know. Okay. Oh, I think well, I, okay. I'm, getting, I'm getting pinged all over the place here. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, how well, folks? If you created the Agent Duran Premium Event and Cigar Club located paying homage to the Met. Whoa. How about those 76ers, Coop? Finally, uh, we beat the Lakers. <laughs> Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga. So Partagas, since Cigar Connoisseur. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, I mean. Saga I, Cigar. I, Keith is, if they don't do Keith something well hard lubricated the year, it's, I'm going to do something I never did, switch teams. I'm, mm -hmm. I've had it. This is, this is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's, they don't care. It's the ownership. It's, it's the general manager. No leadership, nothing. No leadership. I mean, Okafor, what the I mean, you're talking about Sixers. They're, they're, they're chastising this guy about Thanks, proud Keith. to be a Sixer, and, and this, is, this is garbage what they're giving. Oh, that went hey, down. hey, hey never, Nick. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready when you are, dude. Okay, one second. I'm ready. How's it going, Paul? Good. How are you, Will? What, what are you wearing? You don't like my hat, dude? I couldn't tell what it was. No, I just couldn't tell what it was. Oh, it's a hat. It's, it's I have a... hard to see on camera. This is my yeah, Christmas is. hat. It's got like turkeys and Christmas trees on it and stuff. Yeah, it's hard to see on camera. Yeah, it's my, it's I my got holiday a small... hat. I got my holiday hat on, too. Yeah. It's in your pants. Yeah. Where's the, it's supposed to be red <laughs> and white trim. <laughs> my wife made me a nice scarf. It's, it's my, my anti-smoke note. Keep the people who don't like smoking scarf. It's good luck. It really is. It's my good luck scarf. 
You could luck scarf? Yeah, it keeps all the assholes away. It really does. I saw that picture on Facebook. Which one? With you and the your dog yeah. with Wilma. Someone Wilma's made, my someone made my some comment about what did they say in the comments? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He 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 looks ha- something uh, like that. I didn't read that one because <laughs> I didn't comment. Oh, Cause someone said something like, <coughs> I don't know what a nice looking something. I was like him or the dog or something like that. I had some That's snarky it. comment I and I held have. back. Oh, I, I, I held yeah, back. I should have held back. I should have held back. I, I like the Brayton face. That was great. <laughs> Did you like how yeah. I tagged you in that picture, dude? Yeah, I, I was that. going through my camera and I'm like. I'm like, oh, it's a Braden fist. I'm like, I got to tag Feely in that shit, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's going to love that. Hey, we, you're sure you guys know we have Clint Aaron on already. Hey, Clint, how are you? This is oh, Paul. I didn't even know it's saying Good. What's going yeah. on, guys? Hello. Hey. Hello. Excuse me. That's us. my fault. That's my fault. I'm in. doing well. Okay. So, yeah, I'm I'm really sorry, Will. I didn't, I didn't uh, set that up. What we can do is oh. I can make that image full screen, and maybe Paul can physically read the... We're talking about okay. Bombay because there's a new graphic. And also, uh, now that I'm looking at it, these just, like, aren't really big enough. If they could send us something. See, we have we ha- we should have had one. That, that was why, earlier, I, yeah, that's why yeah. I sent that out early today. But um, I realized it's not your fault. I realized no, it today. No, it's my fault. No, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Boy, it's not yours. Ah, it's no, 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 no. It's like not your that. fault. No, I should. If I had realized that, I would have given you more read time. Um, In Nick's but I don't, defense, he's flying solo. Oh yeah! Oh, it is. It Chris is, is it no is. longer with the organization. I'll explain later. Yeah. yeah so okay. Yeah, no, okay. We're not, okay. Not, we're not beating, wow. We're not beating up anything. No. So don't no, worry we're not about beating that. You up, Nick. No, I, I yeah. saw the email. I should have gone through it. That's okay. No, no. What's that song? We should. It's not like on. Nick was sitting around just twiddling his thumbs before the show. Was no, no. I can, just, I, they, poor kid's been working all day. A band yeah, of one. I know. I, I know yeah. Thing. No. And what happened is because. So Nick, I, what do you need, what do you need me to do? You want me to read? Yeah, if you have the script for M Bombay. All right, hold it's on. Just Let the, me find that dude. Hold on. Hold okay. on. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll try to look for a bigger. Hold on. No, it's all right. Well, how long is this going to really delay things? No, hold on. If I can okay. find the M Bombay script, basically what's going to happen. Is Nick's going to put it up, and I'll just read it. It's for the second segment, is what I'm saying. It's for the next segment, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got this segment is brought to you by M. Bombay Cigars. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. I can read that while you put the M. Bombay logo up, Nick. Yeah, I think that will be perfect. Okay. So, that's so we'll do that for the next segment. I'm ready yeah. to read that, Nick. So let's get started with this segment where I don't have to read anything, and then <coughs> we'll, we'll get right into it. Okay. Okay. So you can cut to me. I'll give the intro for the show, and then uh, play the sponsors, and then we'll interview Clint, and then we'll worry about the next segment when it comes. Yep. Okay. Right, that's up. 